I'm Evan Leroy and this is New School Barbecue. Leroy and Lewis Barbecue is a little blue food truck off South Congress in Austin, Texas that cooks locally sourced barbecue on homemade pits. We try our best to honor where barbecue comes from while respectfully adding our own modern touches. These are our recipes, methods, travels, and stories. This is New School Barbecue. What's up barbecue fans, Evan Leroy here. In this video, we're cooking and pulling a half hog like we do for our everyday service on the food truck. At the end of it, we'll make a little pulled whole hog new school barbecue sandwich that we have on the menu. But first I'm gonna go over a few things in our process that have changed since this video was originally published on May 13th of 2020. First of all, we still cook on the same pits with the same wood and the same simple seasonings. The difference is that this video was shot in spring of 2020 in the early part of the pandemic. And just like everybody else in the world, our pork producer was operating at a reduced capacity so they could only get us skin off half hogs. Most of the time we receive and cook hogs with the skin on. We like it that way because we can get the crispy skin, but it also insulates the fat from rendering and dripping and causing flare-ups and eventually causing a grease fire. So the skin helps it cook a lot better. I would definitely recommend cooking skin on hogs. That's really the biggest difference. We position the body and the middle a little bit differently. Now we put the shoulder a little bit closer to the cold door and we have the body back a little bit so it cooks a little bit more indirectly and therefore slower than the more dense shoulder. Other than that, enjoy the video. Comment below on who has your favorite whole hog. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for videos every Wednesday. Head on over to our Patreon if you want a full catalog of over a hundred videos where we also post new videos every Sunday. Happy smoking and see you next week barbecue fans. Gonna salt uh, the top of this and we're gonna arrange it a little bit and then I'm gonna put some coals underneath. All right, I'm just gonna take some of this kosher salt and just shake it over the top here. Normally we do this and there's skin on there and the purpose is to uh, pull moisture out of the skin but this is just gonna be a seasoning. I've already seasoned the bottom side of both of these. It's a little bit hot, it's about 325, a little hotter than 325. These guys have been cooking for a few hours. I'm just gonna give them a quick probe. So we are breaking 100. That's cooking right along. The body always cooks faster than the shoulder. I have, uh, I've been positioning coals not as much under the body as I have a lot under the shoulder and under the pork steak, so in kind of an L shape. 
thicker under here, more under the shoulder, less along the body because it will cook with residual heat that's coming from the coals that are under the rest of the body. All right, so uh, we're here on the smoke in the smokehouse. The pig uh, has been cooking all day. I'm temping it uh, right around 180 in the body, and we'll go 140, 150, probably 160 down there in the shoulder, which is pretty good. Just gonna grab it. Oh. So we're going to go pretty low on the heat for the rest of the night. Uh, this looks great. It has good color. It's not burned at all. It has really good texture. You can see kind of the salt has kind of done its job. I'm just going to flip the shoulder too. Yeah. yeah. Normally we would try to go just a little bit hotter and crisp up the skins, but since this one's skinless, we're just going to go low and slow. Finish it off. We'll pull it in the morning. So this hog has been resting overnight in the warmer at about 180 degrees just to make sure that it's got a really long rest and carry over time and comes out nice and tender. So what we're going to do now is pull it all apart and mix it, season it, and get it going. Start with the shoulder here. This thing's looking real nice. Got that really good direct caramelization on the bottom. And as you can tell, that's where the money muscle is. It's just pulling right apart. Ah, it smells so good. I'm just gonna go to town on this. I've let it rest for a good half hour or so just so it's not too hot to deal with, but it's still very hot. And as you may be able to see on this, the texture isn't completely shreddy on the shoulder. It's still got a little bit of a toothsomeness to it, which we'll talk about more later, but that's one of the textures that's really nice about whole hog is that you get uh, different textures. And the shoulder, you can kind of take to any tenderness you want but this is kind of what we're looking for chunky not shreddy really nice render and nice and tender always save your juices so all these bones and dried out pieces like the membrane here i don't want that in the in the pork itself so that's all going to be set aside and any piece that's cr a little too crunchy like right there where it was in direct contact with the flame We'll save that and we'll add it to the pork hash and rice. Because it's got incredible flavor to it. It's not burnt. It's just a little uh, a little too tight for pulled pork. Mm. Scrape all this meat off the bones. Come on, big boy. Yeah. <laughs> nice bone great for stock. Smoky direct cooked bones for stock. You kidding me? Here's a good example of how you can tell that this pork butt is cooked to perfection. Got that nice clean bone. Yeah, this stuff is perfect. Mm. All right, and that is some beautifully textured pork shoulder right there. This is uh, totally passable as pulled pork right here right now. But this is where whole hog really takes the advantage because now we're going to add a whole bunch of pork belly to this and rib meat and some loin to get those extra textures and extra juicy flavors. Mm. Pork belly. I'm just going to dive right in. So that's what the pork belly comes out looking like on whole hog. You, you don't really get this in any other manner of cooking where you get this pork. It's called pork spaghetti. But nice and stringy. It's a whole so tender. Oh, this is like what barbecue is all about. This is what adds that really nice texture to the pulled pork. Getting these nice strands. This is also something you don't get if you uh, do the cleaver method of 
whole hog where a lot of people will get the double cleaver get that sam jones style going which is great it's also really nice if you uh you know undercook or overcook your pork because you chop it to a uniform texture either way and you're also breaking up the skin in it but the way we do it is pulled pork style where we get all the different textures and this is definitely the king of all the textures right there make a little fold over with that so good and this fat oh love the fat melts in your hands so then we go to town pulling all this pork sketty Oh, oh, all right. Got all the pork belly in. Now it's time to pull out this loin. Look at that bastard. Ay, 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 loin. This is uh, su such a lean cut of meat. It's got a totally different texture to it than the uh, shoulder because it's pretty marbled, or the belly, which is about 50% fat. This is very lean, very, ooh, very hot, very flaky. It just kind of crumbles and by itself this would be pretty uh, pretty terrible pulled pork but because there's so much fat from the ribs and the belly and the shoulder that this will help kind of balance it out and get that perfect texture I know everyone says this in every cooking video but I really wish you could smell this right now it's unreal that rib bone underside just take all that meat off and again, every little bit of crunchiness on the outside here and all these bones are going into, uh, going into good use. Here's that uh, skirt meat from the rib. This is why you never want to leave it on when you're cooking, uh, cooking ribs because this is, this is pork leather. But it'll be great in a stock. And that's it, man. That's what you're left with. Some beautiful pulled whole hog. You got, you know, just reaching through it. It's got such nice texture to it. How many times have I said texture in this video? Got the nice stringy bits from there. The pulled parts from the, from the, from the shoulder. Get some nice chunks from the loin. And that's what, that's what it's all about right there. But it's not done yet. Of course it's not done yet. Got to season this up. And to do that, we use two, maybe three ingredients for the ultimate sauce. All right, so for the pork sauce, we're starting out with some, oh Jesus, some sambal, which is a wonderful chili paste. And we do about, uh, I don't know, 90, 10, 80, 20 ratio. Because this stuff is pretty strong. So in this core container, I'm going to fill it up about that much. And fill the rest up with seasoned rice wine vinegar. This way you get a little bit of uh, acidity. Well, a good amount of acidity. And a little bit of spiciness. And that wonderful, uh, wonderful heat that goes so well with pork. It's kind of our riff on uh, the Carolina style sauce. Which is very vinegar and hot sauce, pepper based. And that's it. The stuff is so good. This seasoned uh, rice wine vinegar has some salt in it already, which is why I didn't add any salt. But once we get this all mixed up, I'll taste it for seasoning. Because also we don't know how much salt made it in from the cooking process. Oftentimes when we have skin on pigs, we will uh, we'll have to salt the skin to make sure it dries out, which is why Keep the salt separate. All right, now it's just time to get in there. Adding sauce to the whole hog is another great way to save it. If you overcooked it or anything like that, this is how you can re-add moisture back into the equation while adding flavor at the same time. Don't need extra moisture on this pig though. That pork belly had a lot of fat in it. So this is looking real good. This also helps with the, uh, the mixing process. You can find any chunks that didn't get quite broken up or any bones you may have missed. And this is when it all starts coming together. 
coming together. Oh. And that sauce is completely variable, just in general, but also place to place. You know, a lot of places you use commercial hot sauces, or some places will, you know, smoke their own peppers, make their own mash, that kind of thing. But as long as you got some heat and some acidity, it's, uh, it's really the acidity that is what you're looking for. Cut through all the richness. But that's looking phenomenal. Tell me that wouldn't make a delicious sandwich. Texture. Sorry to rub it in, but that's really good. Does need some salt though. Just going in with a little bit of kosher till it tastes fucking good. I also love this orange color that it takes on from all the, the chilies. Yep, that's it, that's done. That is our pulled pork, our whole hog barbecue right there. Start to finish, folks. Mmm, good lord. Good hog morning, everybody. We're here, it's hog day. Uh, the hog has been broken down. It's been smoked all day, rested overnight. Brad just finished pulling it, and we're gonna make the best vehicle for our pulled pork, in my honest opinion, which is a sandwich. Martin's potato bun, anything else will be disrespect. Four inches, please. We got beef fat in the roller. Sometimes we put pork fat, sometimes we put butter. Just give it a nice little toast. We just gotta be patient. I'm gonna make sure it makes contact down on this little skillet. On the comal. a nice touch is just a little bit of color on the top of the bun right there and also some sturdiness toast both sides of the bun beautiful beautiful whole hog a little bit of kimchi all of our barbecue sandwiches are topped like this kimchi beef barbecue sauce which is available online for purchase at LeroyandLewis.com the pit door closed. 